Hello boys and girls, I thought we would start today with you doing a little bit of singing. It's the new chorus that we've been learning that goes to the tune of Old MacDonald and it has the words in it. He is God's own son. Jesus is God's own son. He's the perfect one. Died for me, rose again, lives today in heaven. So you sing along. Boys and girls, if we had been together in Sunday school this week, I would have asked you lots of questions. I would have asked you things like, what is your favourite food? Or what do you call your best friend? And I would have tried to guess the answers. But because we're not together, I thought we could do a quick quiz and see what you know about me. So we'll start with a nice easy question. Do I prefer cats or dogs? Well, I like both, but I prefer cats. What is my favourite colour? Purple. Do I prefer chocolate or crisps? Definitely chocolate. The answer to that question, no matter what the other food is, is chocolate. What age was I when I became a Christian? I was 15, nearly 16. Here's a tricky question. What was I thinking about yesterday at three o'clock? And how was I feeling the day before that at two o'clock? You don't know the answers to those questions, do you boys and girls? Do you know, no matter how well you know somebody, even if it's somebody you know really well, maybe like your mummy or a brother or your sister, even if you think you know them really well, you don't know everything that they've ever done. You don't know everything that they've ever felt or everything that they've ever thought. Boys and girls, in our story today, we are going to learn that Jesus does know all of these things. Our story starts with Jesus and his friends, the disciples, arriving just outside a village. It was the middle of the day and it was very, very hot. Jesus sat down at a well because he was tired and he was thirsty. But his friends, the disciples, left him and they went into the village to buy some food. Whilst he was sitting there, a lady arrived out at the well. She was out to get water. She'd brought a pot with her and she would have taken it over to the well. She'd have tied a rope onto it and she'd have lowered it down the well quite a long way. And when it got down to the water, the pot would have filled up and then she would have pulled it back up out again. This is how everybody got their water. There were no taps and in lots of countries in the world today people still get their water out of wells. Jesus asked the lady a question. He asked, will you give me some water? Now this surprised the lady because Jesus was a Jew and she was a Samaritan and Jewish people and Samaritans weren't friends. They wouldn't have spoken and they would have tried to stay out of each other's way. But Jesus wasn't avoiding this lady. He knew that he was going to meet her and he knew all about her. Boys and girls, do you know that Jesus knows all about you? He knows what you look like on the outside. He knows what colour hair you've got and what colour eyes you've got. And he knows what you're like on the inside as well. He knows the things that make you happy and the things that make you sad and all of the things that you think. Boys and girls, that means that Jesus knows all about your sins as well. Even the things that you think nobody knows about. Maybe you've been in school and you've said something nasty and hurtful to somebody. 
and they run and tell the teacher, but nobody else heard. And the teacher calls you in and says, did you say this thing? And you go, oh, not me. I wouldn't say that. No, 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 I didn't say that. And you lie. Boys and girls, you might think that you've tricked your teacher and she believes you and, and you, that your sin hasn't been found out. But God sees all of these sins. He knows that you've said the hurtful thing and he knows that you lied to try and get away with it. Boys and girls, God cannot have sin. God must punish sin. And you cannot do anything that God does not see. The woman was surprised that Jesus was talking to her, but Jesus knew that he could help her. This lady had done some very sinful things. We are all sinners, but the Bible tells us about her sin. The sinful things were not making her happy. Something was wrong and she couldn't fix it herself. Do you know that feeling when you have a nice big drink on a hot day? That happy feeling. Well, grown-ups might have different words for that happy feeling, but you know, you know when you go, oh, that was good. That happy feeling. Well, Jesus tried to tell the lady that the feeling that that happy feeling that you might get from water, he could give her that happy feeling from a different kind of water, from a living water. Living water isn't like what was in her pot. What he meant was he could give her eternal life. This eternal life and the living water was the Holy Spirit. Do you remember we learnt last week who the Holy Spirit is? That he is part of God. Well, he wanted the lady to know that he could give her eternal life. He could take away her sins and that the Holy Spirit could come and live in her heart and that she could have the peace and the happiness that she had been missing. Boys and girls, Jesus talked to the lady about her sin. And you know what sin is, don't you? It's the wrong things that we do against God. The things that grieve his heart, that make his heart sad. Boys and girls, we all sin. You sin and I sin. And Jesus can forgive those sins because he died on the cross to take them away. I asked Jesus to take away my sins when I was 15. But that doesn't mean that I never sin now. I still have to go to God and tell him that I'm sorry for the wrong things that I do every day. Boys and girls, if you look in the Bible, it tells us this. It says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 if we confess our sins that's if we talk to god about our sins if we confess our sins he god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us if you are a boy or a girl who has already got jesus as your savior if you've already trusted in him and asked god to take away your sins don't let the sins that you do today or tomorrow spoil your friendship with Jesus. Just come and confess them and he will clean them away as well. The Samaritan lady was amazed at all of the things that Jesus had to say. She believed in him and she rushed off into the village to tell other people all about him. She told them, this man knows all about me. He knows everything I ever did. The people came out to meet Jesus. That was a good thing to do. They wanted to find out about Jesus for themselves. They asked Jesus to come and stay in the village, to stay with them. And Jesus did and he spoke with them. And lots of those Samaritan people believed in Jesus. And they said this. They said, he is indeed the saviour of the world. They believed in him for themselves, not just because of the things that the lady had said. And they said, he is the saviour of the world. That's amazing. These men and women realised that Jesus was their saviour. Jesus could save their souls from being punished and separated from God. Isn't it fantastic that the lady ran to tell her friends in the village? Isn't it amazing that they listened and they listened very carefully? It is a good thing to listen when people are telling us about Jesus. It's a good thing to tell people about Jesus if he is your saviour. 
There is no better thing in the whole wide world than coming to God and asking to have your sins taken away and to have Jesus as your saviour. Boys and girls, your worksheet this week will go back over the story and here's what it says. It says, Jesus met a lady who needed water to drink. Jesus knew the lady had done bad things. She needed Jesus to forgive her even more than she needed water. And it says, the lady told her friends about Jesus and they believed in him too. Jesus knows about you too. He gives you water to drink and best of all, he can forgive you. Boys and girls, there'll be more worksheets coming in the post for the next session of stories that we have. I will be praying for you this week. And you know who else I'm going to pray for? This week I am going to pray for all of the people who are missing, not getting to see you. That could be your grannies or your granddads or your friends or your aunties or your uncles. Whoever's missing you, I am going to be praying for them this week. Maybe if you're praying this week with your parents or even on your own, you could think about some of the people that are in our Sunday school class and you could pray for them and for their families as well. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.